Well, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mike DiMuccio. I'm your host for Ben's mentoring call today because Ben is traveling. He has been filling for him. And <clears throat> I've got just a few things that I went over with him and I, I wanted to share with you that I've been going over uh, with my team in Canada that I think might be pertinent to, uh, to how you conduct yourself in the business by organizing your mind and your mindset around Nikan as a business uh, versus Nikan as a hobby. And I think we all know that uh, hobbies cost money. Businesses are designed to be profitable to make us money. And the difference um, is, is pretty diverse. Um, I mean, I think there's a number of people who delude themselves in Nikan thinking they're running a business when they're really running a hobby. And the results are what really sort of uh, dictate that. So um, the results will tell you what you should be looking at, meaning how you're measuring it. And then you got to look at what exactly is the behavior that's leading to that. Before we do that, I want to share something here with you because I think it's important to share success, especially if we're measuring results. Oops, wrong one. Tell me if you see, if I can get to it, there we go. Can you see the qualifications for the, uh, for January to October for Team Kaizen? Are you seeing that on your screen? No. Let me try that again. So I need to unclick. It's not letting me get my meeting controls here. Okay, let's try, try again. Here we go. Let's try this again. I want to share this one here. Okay, this should work. Do you see it now? These are the results, the recap. Okay, so this was just posted yesterday, the update to the list for the recap for qualifications for this year, for next year's Team Kaizen. And I think it's important we measure results. We measure success. One of the first things that you need to be, if you're going to be looking at this as a business, Nikan as a business, treat it like a business, you must take stock of things that are, are statistics, measurements. There's a saying that what you measure matters. What you um, uh, measure and recognize multiplies. And so <clears throat> I started doing something recently with my own business, something I used to do a long time ago in the past. I started getting the top, um, the people who achieve 500 points in Canada and posting that on a, on, a, on a document monthly, as well the top, it started with the top five achievers and now it's the top 10 group volume achievers in my organization in Canada. And I, and I went on the premise that what you measure matters and what you measure and recognize multiplies. And sure enough, uh, that's what's been happening. And all I'm doing is taking stock of the information, reviewing it, and then posting it and sharing it with my team and it's having that effect. And I think one of the things that Nikan has put on the scoreboard here uh, and is giving us the opportunity to actually look at is really, really important if we're looking at our business objectively. First of all, I want to congratulate those who are on the leaderboard. Um, I mean, it's fantastic. Some of you have already qualified. I know this, this list is already dated because uh, I know Leo LeMay, for instance, he qualified a few days ago. And so <clears throat> what I think is important and, and how this sort of struck me was I had Leo on one of our calls uh, two weeks ago on my, on my uh, Team Canada call. And I was there with the same usual crew, just like today. And I thought, we don't need to hear from me. Um, here's a guy who's just about qualified for Team Kaizen. Uh, why don't we hear from him? Because he's the one who's making it happen. He's putting the numbers on the scoreboard. He's qualifying for those important recognition points and incentives that we want to, you know, we would like our downlines to, to do so as well. So I started interviewing him. Unfortunately, I didn't record it. We'll have to do that again, and I will record it. But the point that I raised here was there are people on this scoreboard, this leaderboard here that are on this team who we need to hear more from. And I know most of you sort of sit back and play the I'll listen in and I'll contribute every now and then. But quite frankly, I would want to hear from the people on this scoreboard, to be honest, because they're the ones putting the numbers on the board in real time. This is not theory. This is not... If I do this, then this is people who've already done that, which it is that we're seeking to do. So if your name is here on this scoreboard, I think you should volunteer yourself to be a, a co-host or lead a call like this and give us your best practices. Don't be shy about it. 
because you're on the scoreboard, a scoreboard that Niken itself is posting as a feature of what it takes to be winning in the Niken uh, game in, in real time. This is the year 2019, not the year 20, you know, uh, 1999. So we wanna know what does it look like in real time and how do you obtain these numbers? So uh, again, I wanna congratulate all of you who are on the scoreboard, many of you who are gonna qualify. I see myself down here at the bottom, but at least I'm a contender. And um, <laughs> so I feel I, I, I do have something I can contribute to this, this call. But I think it's just important that we recognize the people who are doing it and ask them to participate more actively. And I'm asking you, appealing to you, to partic participate more actively in sharing your insights about what it is you're doing. You may not think it's special, but it's, it's being measured, it's being recognized, and it's going to be rewarded. And this is what we want. We want real-time, real information that means something, not theory. We've had enough of theory over the years. You guys are PhDs, as far as I'm concerned, where this business is concerned. But it's the application of the information that the power lies in, and that's the only thing that matters. We have so many derelicts out there who are highly educated, useless, because they're not actually creating or any value in society. So that's not us. We don't want to be that tribe. Now, I, I did have an agenda um, that I shared with Ben, and it was really what are the five priorities? But before I get into that, I just want to touch on something that Leo said, encapsulate kind of his interview with us about what he was doing that was causing him to win. And there were two things that were very distinct, very clear, and almost the very first two things he said. Well, I don't know what they are. He reaches out and contacts somebody new every single day at minimum one and, and more likely two every day, not some days, every day. So for him, Nikan is not a business of convenience. For him, Nikan is a business and his doors are open every day. And so one of the things that he does that is very, very pertinent to the equation of success in this business is exposure. He's ensuring that, that it happens. And what he's, I said, it's okay, so how do you do that? Where, where are you finding these people? You know, you're not brand new in Nikan. You don't have a million dollar list. Where, where are you going with this? And, and he says, you know, he sometimes he's at, um, in malls, sometimes at coffee shops, whatever. He makes himself available where people are and then makes a point of some type of interaction. And the thing is, he doesn't pitch on the job. He doesn't pitch on the spot. He's just looking to get their email address, from which point is the starting point for his, his process, which we will, uh, we will interview him and, what, and define what that process is, but it entails a number of emails. But the bottom line is, He's there connecting with people on a daily basis. Not some of the time, all of the time. It's a discipline. And so he's now being recognized and rewarded. You know, he's the top PGV in Canada all every month of this year. Last year, he was number one in North America uh, uh, in top, terms of top sponsors. So clearly, this is a guy who we should be hearing from, right? You'd think. Why isn't it happening? We need to make a way for that. We need to make way for leadership to emerge. And, and some of us who, 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 like, who have the gift of the gab need to make the opening, create the opening for that to happen. So please volunteer yourself to be a host on one of these calls so people get the benefit of what it is that you're doing well. Okay, so <clears throat> the other thing he did, number two point, events. Now, again, not some of the time, every single week, he's hosting an event somewhere. It could be a coffee house. He's got his favorite breakfast place that he does like for a Saturday and so forth. So every single week, he's making it possible for an event to happen, which gets what? People then go to events. People then go to the breakfast. People then, his people that he sponsors end up going there. And so he's, being, he's able to create a rhythm. He's got a daily activity that he's doing every week, or excuse me, every day, which is contacting new people, one to do per day religiously. Number two, he's hosting weeks, we, um, um, events weekly. And these are just general information events. They're fun, they're entertaining and so forth. But the point is it creates a gathering place on a weekly basis. So he's able to establish momentum with a local group. And that's critical. And he doesn't decide whether he's gonna do it or not. He just does it and who shows up, shows up. So he's leading by example and he's setting the tone for the business. 
And then the third thing he does, well, he's had, he has been doing, uh, he's had me fly, fly in every month uh, for, uh, for the last six months. And so I come in as the, as the uh, main event for the month, which is, you know, our Power 18 call so is to support a main event. It's not the main event. The Power 18 call is not the main event. It's to support the main event. It's like having a surrogate keynote speaker. Instead, we bring you two, three really powerful testimonies into your venue, into your, into your meeting. Presumably, you have a meeting. Well, he does. And he actually bring, he asked me to come in, so I come in. And that's what's been really helping to establish the rhythm of the business, which is fundamental to any type of success in this business. You cannot create momentum without it. You simply cannot do that. So let me just share with you my five priorities. These are my five priorities when it comes to building the business. I've adhered to this since I can remember ever thinking of them. So first and foremost, priority number one is my open volume, meaning the volume that I'm creating through personal retail sales and the volume that I'm creating through my open group, my, my newly sponsored team. So that's the first priority, meaning if I'm not measuring that and if that's not my a primary objective, I'm missing something. And, and it's very easy to get distracted by things in this. You know, you may be appearing to be doing work, but if it's not putting numbers on the scoreboard where those two numbers are concerned, your personal volume or your group volume, then it's not effective work. And again, it's very important that we develop a high degree of efficiency. Corporations that stay in business are corporations that learn how to become more adapted or more efficient to the times. Otherwise, they'll be out of business by somebody who can do it cheaper. So efficiency, are you being efficient are you uh, approaching your business with efficiency? Are you looking to improve efficiency? Or is it just the same old, same old? Or even worse, random. You know, you randomly contact people. Is it something you're doing every day as a discipline on behalf of your business? You're wearing the CEO hat of your company. Would you hire you? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, if you had a CEO who decided to work whenever, <laughs> Would you hire that CEO for very long? Probably not. So it's just a matter of the transition from looking at this as a profession versus it looking at this as a hobby. And the difference in terms of remuneration is enormous. It's tenfold, at least, at least tenfold. So just some simple things, sharpen the ax on that. Second priority, do my, are my first level, and I'm saying first level people advancing. Why am I saying first level? Well, because these are the people I introduced to this and I partnered with. And if they're not advancing, then I've got to find somebody else. And I'll tell you who that is the next priority. But first level advancement, are they advancing in rank? Why? Well, what brings the two of us together in a relationship, in a partnership, is a common goal. And the common goal is not to be in Niken. That is not the common goal. The common goal is what is the goal? It means it's a measurable thing that we're achieving within a certain time frame. And if there isn't a measurable thing that we're achieving in a certain time frame, it's not a goal. And so my, my first, my second priority is, do I have expectations with the people I've sponsored? And if the answer is no, they're not a partner. They're just a consultant on my team. So the difference between a consultant and a partner is whether there's a stated goal. End of story. That's how simple it is. Do they have a goal? Well, if they don't, did you take the time to set one with them? Are you making yourself available to do that? They may not even know they're supposed to. So that's the second priority. Do I have an objective where my first level is concerned? Now, third, third uh, priority, taproot. What if I have somebody, and let's say we've worked together and we've hit that ex uh, executive, we've hit silver, now what? Where am I working where that leg is concerned? Well, you might think you just keep doing what you're doing. No, you have to taproot that leg. That means they now know what they need to know. Now let them go find somebody else to do that with. You work with who is next in line on that team. Build a personal rapport, a personal relationship with somebody downline. So you're always focused on one individual in any one leg. That's your third priority, your taproot. And then when that person goes silver, then you're now taprooting the next generation. 
Who is that person? Which means you have to actually choose. They might have five or 10 people. Who is it going to be that you choose to work with on your second or your third generation? What makes a taproot is a straight line down. It's not like that. It's straight down. So choosing now becomes, again, a question of, are they measuring up to the standard of partner? Do they have an objective? And it'll be very quick to find who's willing to actually set a goal with you. Therefore, whether they are a partner or not, or just a consultant in your downline. So when you have certain expectations and standards that you're trying to meet, you know how the law of attraction works. It will find you. The circumstances will present themselves. But if you're not setting those standards, then what you are being brought to or what is being, being presented to you is a reflection of that, the best of nothing. So we want to elevate our objectives, our standards, because what that sets up is the law of attraction to attract to us the circumstances that mirror those expectations, those standards. So that's the third, taproot. Fourth is downline, general downline, meaning I make myself available to my general downline of consultants through what, what I learned from a mentor many, many years ago, one of the big, big kahunas in a company, uh, and he called it universal access. Give your downline a place where they have universal access to you. Now, I learned this long before we had the internet and long before we had Zoom. Now it's so easy to give universal access. In fact, it's too easy, and I'll tell you why it's too easy. Because the more universally accessible you are, the less valuable you are as a resource, and the more likely you will be overlooked. And that's, this example, by the way, shows up in things like wellness previews. You know, you'll start a wellness preview and everybody will come because it's new. But how long before that wellness preview is half the size and half the size? And why? It's because the universal access. You want to give universal access, but you want to do it in a measured way. So. How often do you want to give yourself access or, or, you know, example, a rock star, pick anyone. If they came into your city every single week, would they be something you would go and see every week? No. And so they'd become less popular, less, you know, elusive. So there's a degree of that in, in, in choosing how often do you want to expose yourself to your organization, but do it and do it with some regularity so they can expect it. I don't think a weekly call is unheard of. But there should be a weekly call where people can plug into you in some way, no matter who they are, no matter where they are in your organization. Now, we used to do this in the local meetings called the wellness preview. And then we took it to another level called conference calls. Today, we have this thing called Zoom. So make yourself available for your team on a regular basis, at least once a week, not more. But this gives universal access that people can then say, yeah, I have access to my upline. It's my problem if I'm not taking advantage of it, meaning not you, but them. So that's the fourth responsibility or the fourth priority. And the last one is cross line. Now I am guilty of this one right now <laughs> because many of you are not even in my downline and much of the activity that Mike DiBuccio has been responsible for over the last three years has been cross line activity, making it a very, very high priority for me. But that has been with design, with purpose, sort of as a surrogate to the, the leadership requirement to help everybody step into their own shoes and develop, start cultivating a culture of, of understanding and leadership for this generation that you now represent. So, but, I, but normally it's the fifth priority, meaning I am always open to cross line, but it's a, it's a fifth priority to my other concerns. Many of you may be giving yourself up to cross line far too quickly, meaning your time, your energy. And, and I can understand in some areas where you're trying to make a, a something happen in a, in a region, there's reasons to do it, but just measure your time properly so that it's not the thing that becomes a dominant thing. And I'll give an example of this. This is something I'm sure you've all experienced. You measure the success of an event by how many people are at the event. Yes or no? Right? Wrong. Here's how you as the CEO of your company should measure the success of an event by how many of your people were at the event. That's how you measure it. 
And so if we delude ourselves by thinking, oh, we had so many people, but you didn't take stock of how many of those people were yours, you were not being a good CEO. Maybe a great steward for the community, meaning the fifth pillar or the, the cross line uh, uh, priority, but you failed in the other priorities because you weren't tracking who in your downline was there and how it was actually meeting their objectives. So these are the priorities that I think are critical to operating your Nikan business as a business. I want to transition to one last thing here, share a slide with you, something that sort of uh, became obvious to me. It's the four S's. Hopefully you can see this. So we know this slide, right? This is about how money is made. And believe it in, or not, in Nikan, you make it this way too. It's not all leveraged income. Most people who are retailing products are operating as an employee. You're selling to customers, right? So, but is that something we need to develop? Well, if we're going to have any P personal volume, yes. So one of the first skill sets that we need to develop is our ability to sell and create customers. So I think that's an important thing to recognize and appreciate that it is a skill set and it is something that we have to cultivate if we're going to be examples in our business. So get good at it. Don't be shy about it and just, just learn things about selling, read books, you know, go to seminars and so forth. And you'll find it's not a scary word. It's really a service that you're offering to obtain customers. The next piece of this is when we sponsor other people. Now we're acting like self-employed small business owners. Sponsoring is a skill set. So that's the next level of awareness is how do I enroll other people as consultants? Now, I'm just going to give you one footnote on this. Nikan in Latin America at the Diamond Seminar had a directive to the, to the field of leaders. All the leaders of Nikan Latin America go to Diamond Seminar annually. So it was a packed house of the who's who in real time, leaders of real time. They had to qualify to be there. And they had to pay to be there, by the way. So what was, what one of the subject matters there was the things that you and I had talked about recently that I was really, really excited about which was the concept of humans being more versus Nikan as the brand. The idea of humans being more is positioning your offer to help enhance somebody, to help give them an enhancement to their life and their livelihood by activating a Nikan account. In other words, not by getting into Nikan and being assimilated into the cult called Nikan, which I say facetiously, the idea of I have to now adopt a new identity, I have to now um, d diversify my, I, my old identity. No, no, we don't, you don't have to give up your identity. Ni getting involved with Nikan is not about giving up something. It's about moving towards something. And so you want to enhance your health. You want to enhance your opportunities. You want to enhance your, your impact in the community. You want to enhance your income. Nikan is a platform for enhancement. That concept and having an account with Nikan is simply a logical step toward that end. So rather than getting into Nikan, use the language of, have you got a Nikan account? Maybe you should look at getting a Nikan account. And it can help you enhance your life, much like having a Facebook account or um, an Instagram account, et cetera. So that is a big move in, in uh, Latin America as a directive from the company. And this is information I'm sure that we will be hearing about and in the next month, when those of us who travel to Nikan headquarters um, participate in that leadership gathering, because this has to do with the direction that we're moving in, which means sponsoring a consultant is about helping people to recognize the benefits of having an account, not necessarily about a life changing, oh my God, everything's going to change in your life. This is the most important decision of your life, blah, blah, blah. Because the more we make it about that, the longer it takes to make a decision, the less likely someone's going to see themselves making that decision, especially somebody of stature. I didn't work all my life so that I could become an econ consultant. I, you know, I didn't become a doctor or a lawyer or this or that so I could take that hat off and become an econ consultant. No. So show me how an econ is an enhancement to that life that I've built for myself and I'll consider it. Make it easy for me to say, yes, this makes sense to have an account with Nikan. And I'll likely do it. So that's that second 
understanding, that second level of awareness. Then comes the money. The real money in Nikan is about systems. Learning how to teach people the system. First of all, having a system. And any system is better than no system, and nobody's system is better than anybody's system. That, Ben has made that point several times in previous calls, when he shared his experience at Amway, and there was this division in the field about the Brit system, and the that system, and the Jaeger system, and at the end of the day, their forensic audit proved that there was no difference in any system. Just the mere fact that they had a system was sufficient. So have a system, and if you don't have one, find one. Find one that you can adapt very, very quickly because the business of duplication is the business of teaching a system. The only thing that's duplicatable is the system, not you, just the system. So the, the migration from being a person who trades time for money, which is on the left-hand side, to a person who has leveraged income and the potential for residual income is whether or not they understand their system and whether or not they are teaching a system, okay? Finally, is the last piece, which is that passive, beautiful passive income, you know, where you got that ongoing passive income, you know, making you an income. And where, what's that all about? It's about servicing the community. And I'm not talking about the community outside of Nikan, I'm talking about your Nikan community, meaning your downline, your crossline, as you service your customers, your downline, your customer, your uh, crossline, as you create service and value in the community, that keeps the community vibrant. That keeps Niken and the humans being more concept top of mind. That allows people to stay connected and reconnected, and that generates the flow of, of um, products into that community and subsequently your passive residual income. So finding ways to be of service to the community ensures the longevity of your income, which is why people like myself have spent so much time developing systems, developing communication channels, recording videos like this and so forth for the general populace because it's a service that can enhance the stickability, if you will, the community, the, the richness of the experience of the community. So look for ways to be of service. So Develop yourself as a seller. Develop yourself as a sponsor. Develop yourself as a person who understands, utilizes, and teaches systems, and then be of service to the community. And those are the, the real uh, metrics, if you will, the real points of, of making your business a business, and one that has predictable results. So that's what I wanted to share with you today, and I think I did it in about 29 minutes. So I think we'll leave it at that. I want to thank you for, for joining me. And again, I want to congratulate those of you. I see Madeline, you're on the line. You're, uh, you're probably going to get that done this month, the, um, uh, the Team Kaizen. So we've got some people we need to hear from in the next uh, coming calls and, uh, and learn more about how they are getting this Team Kaizen thing done. I'm a little frustrated myself, to be honest, Madeline. I only had like 30,000 points and I got 20,000 to go. Well, I'm 18 now. That's so, because you wrote that book on the PhD. <laughs> and my holdup is I've been teaching it instead of doing it. So now you need to do what I'm doing. It. Exactly. Exactly. I got to go back to my priorities. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Have a great month. Make November a special month for you. You know, this is always a great month, but make it your best month. Why not? Why not? You have everything to, to gain. All right. Have a great one. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Michael.